before we preview the 2020 team and, and the offensive line for next season, I think it's fair to go back and talk about the job that you and everyone did for the 2019 season and the offensive line that won the Joe Moore Award for the nation's best offensive line. Can you just talk about that unit and kind of what they did to get to that point? Yeah, I tell you what, just uh, determination. Um, you know, they just did a great job just coming together and uh, putting in the work and and knowing what they wanted. To, they they had a they had a vision of what they wanted to do and and uh, and boy did they ever work at it. And uh, they they put in the effort and uh, the extra time and you didn't have to really watch what they were doing and then get around them to do it and tell them what to do. They just went out and did it. And now I'm talking about doing the extra when. When uh, you you know you're not out there, you know, and you obviously in the summer you can't be out there coaching them and doing all that. But uh, they'd go put in the extra work when uh, you didn't have to tell them to do it. Coach, one thing that always stood out to me, and I've told you this, was if it was Derek coming in for Sadiq or if it was Ed coming in for McGee at left guard, it didn't really matter. The chemistry never left that unit, and as you know, coaching in the NFL for as long as you did, that's very difficult to achieve. Oh, there's no question about that, and. Uh, I just think it was the combination of a lot of the, you know, the guys being around each other for uh, uh, over a year and and uh, understanding the system of what we wanted to do up front, um, and then really, you know, uh, going back to basics and simplifying a lot of things and and not doing too much. Uh, I think that really helped us and it, and gave our guys a lot of confidence uh, moving forward during the season. Speaking with James Craig, LSU's offensive line coach here on Hanging with Hester, coach every year. A room takes a position room takes on a different personality. Lloyd Cushenberry was honored with number eighteen last year and clearly a huge leader on the team. And in your room, what do you think the personality of this room is? Who steps forward into kind of a leadership role for you? Yeah, it'll, it'll be interesting. I, I tell you what, um, you know, it, you, you wish you could have had some spring, in, you know, some more spring to sort of figure out who those guys are going to be. But you know, Austin Deculus has played a lot of football for us. Um, he's out there working and, and, and grinding it out and he, he's a voice in the room and Ed, Ed certainly is. Ed, Ed's the lead by example guy, a lot like Lloyd, um, was where Lloyd is quiet until he has to, until something sets him off where he has to say something. But, uh, Ed's that way. Uh, he's a quiet guy, but he works and he gets after it and uh, he's played a lot of football as well. Um, but it would be interesting to see who those guys are. And, and obviously there's a guy, uh, Jason Hines that hasn't played much since his first year. Um, and then last year it sort of wasn't really right with that knee situation. Um, but he's been battling back and working hard and grinding it out. And I, I expect a lot out of him this year too as well. Sadiq missed a little time and Dare Rosenthal stepped in and, and played a lot for you last year. When you turn on the tape and look at what you saw from Dare last year, what did you see? Uh, I, I saw a young man that really grew into the position. Um, like right now, when you when you when you watched him, like you know, just moving around in the winter workouts and stuff like that, he just looks different. He's got a he's got a confidence to him now. He, he bends a lot better. He moves a lot, but he's just more fluid. Uh, I think it, it comes with understanding, you know, sort of the what he needs. To, I think when you know what you're doing, you you play faster. And and when you when you play for the first time and you get your taste of playing it's going to mean something to you. And, and right now uh, the game means something to him. And I like where the direction he's going in. And he, I just look forward to watching him work this fall. Coach James Craig is our guest here on hanging with Hester coach. When you look at a guy like Anthony Bradford, six, seven, 355 pounds and coach O was on earlier this week on OTB and just kind of had praises there for Anthony Bradford. Is this a guy that you can see stepping up and being a starter on this football team? I can, you know, um, he, he certainly fits that bill. He's strong. Um, uh, the thing that he he's got to do, you know, I, you know, is just get in the the heat of the battle and 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 lock horns and and see how he strains and finishes and how he can fight. You know, that's the thing that you learn in spring. That's what I was hoping we'd get. You know, obviously some more practices in, and but we're gonna hopefully we we'll get some here and coming shortly. And and uh, you can see him get after it and and sustain. You know, he's a big guy, he's a strong guy, but can he sustain and finish like you'd want him to every play? LSU has had a history of moving defense alignment to the offensive line. We were talking about it, Coach, before you came on. Our 07 National Championship team had two starters that were defense alignment. The 2011 runner-up team had a couple of those guys as well. Joseph Evans, 
of course, played defensive line a year ago from Haynesville, moves over to the offensive line this year. And from everything that you hear, he's got the right attitude to be able to make that switch. Yeah, he has the tools. Uh, he's eager. Uh, he asks questions. Uh, very bright young man. Um, really pleased to have him. Uh, really athletic. Um, you know, he, he fits the bill as a center. Um, and, uh, again, you, just, you know, with such a young group, you'd like to saw more of them this spring. Um, but, you know, with Joseph and Jason Hines is a converted D lineman, uh, Dare Rosenthal is a converted D lineman, and, um, yeah, he, he's part of the pack. So um, I'm really pleased with uh, Joseph, what I saw, and I, I could see some good things moving forward with him. Coach, what have you been able to do with your guys during this time? Has it just been kind of Zoom film sessions, for lack of a better term? Yeah, we do like interactive Zoom sessions. Uh, you know, we install, obviously, the plays, the installs, the general installs. This is like actually going on my second time installing our, our training camp installs, but we get in more depth of talking certain protections and going over calls, and, and we'll put them on point. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll ask them questions on there and make them answer and do the best you can just to simulate some kind of football. And I, I just think it's I think it's just good for them just to hear your voice and talk football and for them to answer you back when you're asking them questions, uh, just getting them engaged. I, I think that's all they really need. And they need, and we get a chance to do that daily, which is really good. James Craig joining us here, hanging with Hester. Coach, you realize where this is coming from, a guy who doesn't know much X's and O's from the football side of things. But I, I wonder, you weren't here during the time where LSU was a lot of tight ends, fullbacks, running the ball straight up the gut. You didn't see a lot of that, but – you were obviously here last year when the field was spread. There were five guys out in routes. Is it, quote-unquote, easier for an offensive line when the field is spread like that? Or obviously you have lesser numbers. Does it make things a little bit more difficult? Uh, I would say um, your scheme, I think you got to simplify what you do um, and get good at it. And that, because and you got to be able to block, you know, obviously – different types of schemes because what makes it difficult is you don't know what you're going to get like Auburn you know lined up in a defense they've never ran ever um they ran a 3-3 stack and I've never seen that since I've never seen that since I've been in coaching um and so you got to be able to respond to it with with your system that's in place uh but every week we go out and say all right what's the flavor of the week what are they going to do but everybody would change their defense trying to play us last year but I think if teams are going to do that, you've got to be simple within your system. Coach, when you look at the staff there offensively, there's a lot of NFL influence in that staff. And you and I have had plenty of conversations because we were actually in the same places with the Chargers, with the Broncos. And we've talked about Phillip Rivers and Peyton Manning and all that they demanded in protections. And so I say that to say this, when you look at college defenses – in the protection game, I've got to imagine what y'all do and what y'all install as far as your NFL experience makes it a little bit easier for y'all because you've seen everything. In the NFL, the blitz packages and everybody where they line up, they can come from any direction. So how has that been translating that to the college game? Uh, it's been great. I tell you what, uh, all the guys have bought in. Uh, you know, the, you know, Once you get the quarterback bought in, it's all over with. Uh, and then once they study it and know it and see it from your perspective, and it's been great, you know, uh, you know, I got a chance to meet with, you know, you know, Joe Burrow at, at, when he first got here, he wanted to talk protections. And then at the end of his first year, he came in and said, coach, I want to have a private meeting with you. I want to go over all the protections again. I want to master this thing. And, and he took it over and, and, uh, you know, we, we, we make, we make the call and, he can always trump it, but he better study the defense and know what's going on because if he puts us in a certain direction and the other guy comes that he wasn't accounted for and he gets hit, that's sort of on him. So <laughs> he, he, he's going to study it, know it and, uh, inside and out, but there's a method of how we do it. Um, it's just how I've been trained by you know being around these guys and stuff like that, but uh, um, they're, they're doing a really good job. And that, that's something that you can do now and on these Zoom calls, too, is you get a chance to meet with the quarterback sometime and talk protection with them, too. And, and it's just good to get that line of communication going and everybody being on the same page. Coach, I, I think that's fascinating because – my time in college football and covering college football and then playing in the NFL, not a lot of college quarterbacks have the wherewithal to understand protections. They don't really put a 
point of emphasis on those protections. And so to have a quarterback come to you at this level and want to know that, I've never heard of that. Is that something that you've ever seen or been a part of? Uh, yeah, just not not in college. No, I have not. Not in college, but, you know, obviously in the NFL, that's, that's that that that's what they do, right. uh, and and Joe, you know, Joe's just that special guy, you know, and you know, I, I feel these guys have that capability too, and and um, they they want to know more. They they uh, we met with them one time on the Zoom talking protections, and they've been talking to Coach Ensminger about doing it again. They want to get on there and do the same thing again and go over it again. So they they have that eagerness too, and uh, but that that Joe is special. Now he's he's got a he's got a way about him. Something else that was special, in my opinion, being around the team and going out to practice was the relationship between Burrow and Lloyd Cushenberry, the center. I think you have to have that. And, you know, I know who I'm talking to. You know it for sure. You have to have that relationship and that trust between the quarterback and center. And I thought last year was a really good dynamic between the two. There's no doubt. I, um, I did an interview out in Denver um, as soon as Lloyd um, got drafted out there. And I said, you know what? What's funny is that he, it's really comparable to how Peyton was to like Jeff Saturday. And then obviously uh, Matt Paradis at the time when I was at Denver, they sort of had that glue between each other, that bond with each other. Like he and Lloyd were really tight and then they, they studied protections and they got in there and, and uh, they're always on the same page and they always talk through everything and in a calm, uh, respectful manner. And, and uh, they ask a lot of questions and they were great. They're true pros. All right, Coach James Craig, the LSU offensive line coach. We can't thank you enough for your time, Coach. We appreciate you hopping on with us for a couple minutes. You bet, guys. Take care.